my name is Jacka, and in this video, I'm gonna show you five more really easy techniques to animate GIF stickers in Procreate. Now, these techniques are gonna be slightly more complicated than my first video, which you can check out right here in case you missed it, but I promise that it's gonna be really easy, or at least I'm gonna make it as easy and simple to follow along as possible. So without further ado, let's head on over to our tutorial. So for this next technique, I drew this simple ice cream cone and we're just gonna group all of that together and name this group ice cream. And let's bring up our animation assist panel. We are gonna set the ice cream group into our background layer because for this animation, I'm gonna have some colorful sprinkles gradually appear along this ice cream. So let's create a new layer for the sprinkles. Draw a few lines like that. There's your first frame. And I'm gonna change the color of some of these sprinkles, make it more colorful, because we like colors here. Then we're gonna duplicate this sprinkles layer that we already have and continue building on that and draw a few more sprinkles along the middle section of the ice cream. And just continue doing that for our last frame of the animation. So again, duplicate this layer and build up some more sprinkles on the ice cream. And there we go! So I'm just gonna lower down the frame rate, make it a bit more slower, and set the animation to ping pong. And I think I'm gonna add an empty frame before the first part of the sprinkles appear, so that there's this one frame in the animation where there's no sprinkles. And you've got yourself a super cute, super colorful ice cream animation. You can also do the appear and disappear effect by gradually erasing parts of an illustration. So here I have this floral illustration that I made, and I made sure that each element that I want to gradually appear is on its own layer. Group all of these layers together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this flowers group each time I make a frame of animation, and that way if ever I make a mistake, I can always go back to the original illustration. So I'm just gonna hide the safety group and work on the first duplicate, and let's rename that as one so we don't get confused. I want to make these plants wiggle around a bit before I gradually remove parts of it. And let's pull up the animation assist panel and I'm gonna duplicate group one, rename that as two, and I'm gonna select everything that is part of this rose or flower. So like this, and let's rotate that like that. And then I'm just gonna do the same for this flower and this fern. And then maybe for these three pink flowers, I'm just gonna do a flip vertical effect. And let's rotate that some more. Cute! Okay, so now that we have our plants rotating across two frames that are just going back and forth, I'm gonna duplicate each of these two frames so that we'll have a total of four frames. And I'm gonna duplicate this and move the copy at the very end. We're gonna start at removing parts of this illustration. And I think I want to remove the three flowers first. So let's simply hide that layer and just basically remove more parts of the remaining plants until they disappear. And for our final frame, add one blank layer. And let's set the animation to ping pong and let's see what we've got. For this next Procreate animation technique, I drew this super adorable toucan character hanging out on a vine, just chilling, living its best life. For the layers, I made sure to group together all the elements of its head in its own group, like this. And then everything else, all the other layers, are the toucan's body and the vine. And this group is gonna become our background layer because we don't need to move that. So let's open up Animation Assist, and let's set the body as the background layer. So we've got our head in its own frame, and let's duplicate the frame. And what I want to do for this second frame is I want the toucan's eye to close first before it 
flips or turns its head. So let's go in to this second frame of animation and I'm gonna draw a funny shape eye like that. And don't forget the lashes, of course. So now we have this toucan closing its eye and actually Let's put, go a step further and slightly rotate the head as well. Add a bit of anticipation to the animation before he or she fully turns or flips its head. Like so. Duplicate the first layer. And I'm gonna move that to the very edge of the timeline. So select the head layer and then click flip horizontal. And let's move the toucan's head into the correct position. Duplicate this closed eye layer as well. And I'm gonna try to hold these poses, the first frame and the third frame. I kind of want to hold them for, let's try, two frames. And now you have the most basic head turn animation ever. I'm gonna teach you a really simple way to do frame by frame animation. Let's start off with our banana shape, I guess. There you go, a banana. No, that's a weird looking banana. That looks more like a Twinkie. What does the banana look like? Oh, there you go. Okay, there's the banana-ish. Oh, there, okay. Nice. I mean, it's just like a guide for our animation. So I'm just gonna lower down the opacity of that. Make a new layer. So we're just gonna be animating a banana unpeeling. Make a new layer and draw the skin of the banana. So let's make a new layer. Tap on it, click clipping mask, and that way anything we draw on this clipping mask layer will be within this banana layer. Looks cute! Group the banana skin and the banana details layer together. Name it group 1, meaning that's the first frame for animation, the banana whole and unpeeled. And while we're grouping layers together, let's group the banana innards layer and the sketch layer so that this is gonna be our background layer, meaning the very base of our animation. And let's bring out the animation assist panel and set our background layer as the background. And let's make a new layer so that we can create the second frame of our animation. And let's add in more details. And don't forget to group whatever layer you have. Group them together to create one whole frame of your animation. peachy color. That's so cute. Okay. And there you have it, a banana animation. But I think it, we're gonna, it, I think it's gonna look so much better if we add a frame in between this frame and this frame. Kind of to make the animation much smoother and more appealing. Let's rename this group of layers into three because this will become our third frame now and let's create a new group in the middle and name that two. I am just increasing the onion skin opacity so that I can see the before and after just like a midway point of the two frames. How cute is that, right? Good job. I'm patting you on the shoulder. So for frame by frame animation, like with this, think of objects where there's like a before and after that you can animate. And then I apply the same technique to this sticker where I drew the leaves of this plant kind of growing and shrinking across three frames. And then I set it to the ping pong type of animation. 
for this next technique, we are going to be animating the tail of this tiger. So to do that, let's organize our layers first. And I'm going to group together all the layers of the tiger's body. And I'm going to make a separate group for the tail of this tiger. And let's bring up our animation assist panel. So this time, we're going to make the tiger's body into our foreground layer. Let's duplicate the layer to create a second frame for it. We're going to bring up the warp transform effect. And we're going to make it look like the tiger's tail is swaying. So just simply pull up the tail like that. And let's make a new duplicate of the tail layer. And warp it up a bit more. Make it all curly like this. And make sure that the tail doesn't overlap the tiger just because the arrangement of the layers make it so that if you move the tail on top of the tiger, it's actually going to appear underneath it. So let's just warp it up until there. And make sure that we set it to ping pong and then let's lower the frame rate. And let's hit play. Yay! Super cute. So our next technique is super easy. We're just gonna draw one thing and change the color of it. And we're gonna do that trendy rainbow, that trendy minimalist rainbow that I see everywhere. Okay, that took way longer than it should have. So duplicate your layer. And we are gonna animate the colors of the rainbow radiating outward. So this yellow color is gonna go up here. The orange color will shift to the second rainbow bow. And the dark pink will go to the topmost bow of our rainbow. Like so. And we're just gonna duplicate that frame and continue with that pattern until we go all the way back to the original arrangement of the colors. And there we have it. Four frames because we have four bands or, I don't know, curves of the rainbow. And let's pull up our animation assist panel and hit play. <gasps> pretty! It's so pretty! Oh my gosh! I kind of like it being this fast though, but I feel like it's a bit too fast. And we're done! Yay! Thank you so much for making it through to the end of this video, and I really hope that any of these techniques, whether in this video or in my first video, give you enough inspiration to start making your own GIF stickers. And again, if you missed out on my first part of this whole mini tutorial series, then you can check it out right here, as well as this other video tutorial that I have, which will walk you through the entire process on how to set up a Jiffy account so that you can share your beautiful GIF stickers out into the world through Instagram and Facebook stories. If you enjoyed this video, then I really appreciate it if you can give it a thumbs up to help with the algorithm, as well as subscribe to this channel for more fun GIF sticker related content. As always, create your own adventures and I'll see you in the next video.